Hey, this is Paul Martin and Ray the Roadie for the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. How's uh, how you been, Ray? I'm doing well. I'm nice and tan. I'm very excited about what's coming up. It's just I I just can't believe how excited I am. Well, well, calm down, boy. <laughs> calm it's, down. It's- Once upon a time, there was an engineer. Choo Charlie was his name. We hear. Really? We're, we're, we're interviewing the guy who wrote Good Yeah, candy. you said it's like, I mean, we did the Pez band band with the candies and stuff, and you said we're going to be doing Choo Choo Charlie, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I was, no, you must have misunderstood. Oh. We're interviewing Sean and Charlie. Oh, oh. <laughs> boy, I feel stupid. <laughs> I thought for a minute that we were interviewing the guy who wrote the Choo Choo Charlie theme song. Oh, I thought we were interviewing Choo Choo Charlie, man. I, he was one of my faves when I was a kid. That good, good and plenty candy was awesome. Uh, it was disgusting, I thought. Did you? Well, <laughs> to some. It's an acquired taste. I guess so. Like scotch. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah I can't drink that either. <laughs> Not like tequila. No. You know what? I think... To- but to some people, tequila is an acquired taste, too, though. Yeah, I like Jameson, too. I like Jameson. I think Sean and Charlie like Jameson. I'm, th- I'm pretty sure that they do. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, we talked about it. We, do, we You know, Jameson came up in our conversation with them. Yes, it did. Um, I guess they were known as the, Sh- the Jameson band for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the band that drinks Jameson. So. The band that drinks Jameson, that's right. So let's let's find out what they had to say for themselves and uh, and uh, just see how many shots we could do while we're talking to them. Yeah, let's uh, let's go grab a bottle and sit back and listen to this. Okay, sounds like fun. Well, uh, welcome to the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. We want to welcome in. Uh, well, first of all, let me say if you've ever been to any of the bars on the south side or the southwest side of Chicago or in the southern suburbs, then you've probably partied with Sean and Charlie. How you guys doing? <laughs> hey guys. How are you? Yeah, we're doing great. That's good. That's good. Good to hear you. Good to hear you. Good to see you. So you guys have been around for, for quite a while. Uh, tell us how it all got started. When, when did it get started? And how did you guys link up together? Wow. Nah. That's, a, that's a complicated question. Charlie, <laughs> you, go, you go ahead, man. You go ahead. Start up back yeah. in the Bennigan's days. Yeah, absolutely. I met Sean when we were 16, I believe. Um, yep. We are now in our mid 40s I won't say what, but uh, <laughs> we met at Bennigan's and uh, we were uh, in a band where I played drums and Sean played guitar and sang and we were doing the whole grunge scene. We were doing all the covers for that. Um, and then, you know, progressed later on in life, uh, closer to the last 12 years, I think, that Sean and I have been playing now. Uh, we just started doing a two-man thing. Um, and it was just something where when Sean had his first son, he needed a part-time job. And I was doing some solo stuff. And he said, hey, man, you want to play? And I said, sure, let's do it. So then over the years, we, we've gotten fiddlers and some bass players. And we've, we've grown the band to more than two of us. So Let me jump back <laughs> in here there. <laughs> so I remember... When we met in, in Bennigan's back way back in the day, Charlie and I were both like bus boys and hosts. We met each other there. After about three months or so, I had a band that just started in high school that was just, we were just getting out of high school or just in our senior year. And uh, we started at Moraine, uh, Moraine Valley Community College. And I was walking through uh, the courtyard one day and our, I had a word from our bass player, guitar player at the time, that our drummer wasn't going to make it. And I remember seeing Charlie, and I remembered from Bennigan's that he was a drummer. And I thought, hey, man, you're a drummer, right? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, you want to be in a band? <laughs> and uh. he said, uh, 
yeah, I guess, man. What do you got going? I said, we got practice today at like 5.30. You going to make it? Give me the address. Here we go. And that was it. And Charlie showed up to practice that day. And he was the drummer in our original band when we were 19 years old, 18 years old. Oh, yeah. And he just showed up. And then that was it, man. Like, we've been playing music together ever since. It's been about, what? 30 years? Yeah, 30-something yeah, years. <laughs> Which Benigans, that, which Benigans was this at? This was at Chicago Ridge Benigans, 6400 yeah. South yeah. Ridgeland Avenue or 6400 6, West Ridgeland Avenue in Chicago. Right, right. I know where that is, right in the corner right there. <laughs> you got it. They should say. We were blues busters, man. We were blues busters back in the day when Benigans had, it was all about flair. We had to have a little, little bandanas and pins tied all over us. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so what did, what did you call the band back then blue collar oh yeah it started off as blue collar right yeah and then i'll never forget when we went in to record our first three song uh first three song recording at star tracks with uh george Luff. we went in there recorded and we found out halfway through the recording session that there was another band in the area called Blue Collar, and they were like a Styx uh, tribute band. <laughs> that makes and we sense. were crushed. That makes sense. Yeah. We were, and we were, of course, we were all talking about like, well, what if they got the rights to the name? Like, we had no idea. We were, you know, we were kids. Uh, what if they got the rights to the name? We better, we better come up with a different name. And then immediately it drove us into this spot where we had to try to figure out what were we what were we going to call the name? So what were we going to call the band? So our bass player at the time, we were big into grunge, right? And a lot of the songs that were coming out at that time were really emotional. And, and we were just, we thought we were right on the cutting edge. And, and one of our, uh, the bass player at the time, Pete Johnson, he said, how about the crying? <laughs> 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 so, no, that, that sounds like it would be a shame. <laughs> 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 so for about, oh, I don't know. Four months, we were known as the crying. And then when we got so much shit for being the crying after so long, uh, I think Charlie, out of nowhere, decided we should be called Wishbone, Wishbone, Taylor. Bone, Wishbone Taylor and the Freak Out Seven. Oh, shit. Now, there were, only, there were only four of us. <laughs> but we figured, hey, that's a way more uplifting, uplifting catchy name than the crying. There you so go. We spent, the, le- the end of that band was the Wishbone, Wishbone Taylor and the Freak Out Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> so where you, where you guys were playing? Parties in, uh, in some clubs or whatever? Yeah, I don't think we did too many clubs. There's more like, you know, American Legion halls and, you know, sure. kind of more at scene backyard parties and doing that sort of thing. But yeah, we were, we weren't even 21 barely. So I think there was a cup, there was a bar called Brewski's in uh, blue Island that we used to play and we would, we would play Bailey's and, you know, some of those places at down Western Avenue, but not a ton. Yeah. We had a guy named, we had a guy named Kevin Davis who uh, was into or, uh, you know, had relations for many, many years with, our bass player, Pete Johnson's daughter, uh, sister. Sister, yeah. And, and he, out of the kindness of his heart, allowed us to rehearse in his basement. He had a he had a house in Mount Greenwood with another True. one of his buddies, two more of his buddies, Marty and uh, Vinny. They would, uh, they, he totally like, basically gave us free run of the house and we would practice all day while they were working. And... <laughs> As a result, nice. when when it came down to when it came down to like they would have parties, they were like, uh, "Yeah, we're gonna have a party, and uh, uh, you guys, Wishbone Taylor and Freak Out Seven or BMC or whoever we were at the time, you guys are gonna perform at the party." So we had a lot of parties that were kind of, you know, these guys were about oh I don't know eight or nine years older than us, but they had taken us in and allowed us to do such awesome things. <laughs> uh, where we didn't have the resources to go practice anywhere like any time we wanted. So we ended up playing all these parties for these folks that were a little bit older than us, but uh, we were like their, uh, you know, we were like their little brothers that had a band. It was really cool. So it was like payback for the uh, 
For the use of the house and uh, use of the practice space, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and a priceless commodity at that time. So you, you've evolved from then, right? And, um, and, and so let me ask you this. How are you guys surviving, uh, uh, surviving right now with COVID-19 thing going on? And, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure you didn't play much in March or April or May, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really interesting because the amount of times that Sean and I play have condensed to not much. But at the same token, those shows that we have played have been so much more magical and so much more fun because we don't really have that outlet that we normally were having probably every Friday, every Friday and Saturday for every week. You know, that's what we were doing. Now it's kind of like maybe twice a month, maybe if we're lucky. But um, we had some great, amazing people that play with us. You know, that's what Sean and I, I always say, I'm like, the, the, the only way to be successful is to play with people that are better than you. And the people that play with Sean and I are way better than both of us. I mean, I don't deserve to be on standing with, you know, the fiddlers and the bass players and the people that we have playing with us. And it's just like, hey, you know, the more that that we get this and, and what's happening right now is a lot of these people aren't playing as much as well. So we're getting more opportunities to play with more people because they're just looking for work. So. It, it, it's a blessing and a curse because it's like, well, it's terrible that you, you're not making that money, but now we're getting opportunities to play with a lot of really cool people because they're just looking for, you know, hey, we'll give you 150 bucks or whatever the case is. Sure. Hey, sure. And they come out and play, so it's cool. Um, now, who is it to be in now or how many are in the band or, or do you have a rotating uh, fraternity of guys or how does that work? <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a good question. For, yeah, for God, years... God. For like, you know, for like seven years, the first seven years, it was just me and Charlie. It was just Sean and Charlie. It was a two-piece band, and we played just about anywhere. And the, the blessing of that was we could play any place. Like, we could play – we played at Beggar's Pizza, like, next to the bar, you know, because we fit in that four-foot-by-four-foot four foot area that they had to spare, and it was great. And after we did that, you know, for six years and we were playing back in the day, we were playing 250 shows a week or a year, rather. We were playing every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and occasionally Sunday, every week, all week. After a while, both, we brought both, on both of, you, both of you just play guitar or what? But Charlie was playing guitar and kick pedal and singing harmony. And I was playing tambourine and singing uh, okay. lead, singing lead. Yeah. And, and, it was funny that you say that because like the first four shows that we played, we both played guitar. Yes. And then it became very apparent that my job in the band was not just to sing, but to like go around and entertain people at their tables and, <laughs> and run around and do stuff while we were performing. And it, it just was pointless to bring the guitar out anymore because I never played it. And that I suppose that gets to the really the core point of, you know, that hits on something. Sean and Charlie, there's been a million two-man bands, three-man bands that play in these bars. And some of these guys and some of these acts that you see, they're amazing musicians and amazing singers and things like that. But the thing that has really made Sean and Charlie stick out over the years is the performance aspect of it. Not just the singing and the music performance, but the showmanship. And really that's what made us us, you know. I, I, I have the I have the 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 why well, bless I keep saying blessing, but I'm I'm lucky enough to work for Sure Incorporated. Right? They're the manufacturer of these great microphones and wireless systems and things like that. And throughout the years I've been able to test and use these wireless systems. When we went wireless, I was able to walk around the room. We were getting up on the bars and performing on the bar tops four people and they ate it up. Like we were nowhere near as good as some of these other two or three man bands that came out that were amazing musicians. But that interaction with the crowd and that showmanship just, it made people want to come back out and see us again. Cause it wasn't about how great the music was. It was about how much fun they had when they were out. I agree with that hundred percent. I mean, I've always been a proponent of that, uh, uh, that, that school of thought, 
a little uh, entertainment, it goes a long way. Agreed. Yeah, I, I haven't noticed, Paul. Are you still shaking and shimmying? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Not as much as I used to. <laughs> what, 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 what do you feel has kept you guys together all these years? Being able to forget how much I can't stand Charlie every night. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, like we've been through so many ups and downs. I mean, when I was talking about earlier about playing 250 shows a year, during that time, I mean, we're best friends. We will always remain best friends. But during that time, after, you know, the first year of doing that many shows a year, we were both working full, full-time jobs at the time, too. Of course. We would show up to a show. We'd pull up. We would silently empty our cars with the, with the gear, go in, set it up, get ready to play. And the first words that we said to each other other than, hey, was yeah. – was all right what do you want to play what song yeah and and we immediately would go into the show like it's it's a it's a it's an alter ego if you will it's a separate personality but no matter what craziness happened that night or no matter if charlie did something that pissed me off or i did something that pissed him off or or we blew the world away with our brilliance (laughs) Uh, no, no matter what, whether it be good or bad, the next day was just another day. It was just a new day that we're starting. And last night was, last night was a lot of fun and it was an interesting experiment. And let's see what we can do next time to make it either different or better or whatever it was. But having a short memory, I think has blessed us uh, throughout the years. We, we never, never take anything to heart. It's always. It's about having fun and it's about performing. And if you, if you get too tied up into egos, it's just going to eat you up and kill you. So you got to have a short memory. Yeah. I'm going to add Sean. I mean, the ego thing to me, and I think anybody that that has played music with other, other cats knows that egos is what kills bands. I mean, that's what kills relationships but especially with bands. And that's something that Sean has never had and I don't have. Uh, and I think that's something that works for us. You know, I'll never forget, um, you know, people asking me, like, Sean had some stuff going on. I forget what it was in his personal life. And I remember someone asking me, like, hey, what's going on? And I go, I have no idea. And they're like, what do you mean you don't know? Didn't you just work with him? I'm like, yeah, but we don't talk. <laughs> so I think that's the really don't. And that, it, Sean already referenced it. But yeah, I mean, we, we're we all about the music when it's about the music. And and if I'm hanging out with Sean, then we'll talk. And it, and if Sean needs me, he knows. I, I'm, I'm there for him all the time. He can call me whatever he needs to. But if he don't call me, then we just go about, about our business. So. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I see that. And, and guys in general, I think, are, are sort of like that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, we're trying not to be uh, too much where we're too much where we, we bicker and, and stuff. And if we do, you know, we go out in the street, we pump, we punch each other out and then we go back to the side of a beer, right? <laughs> exactly. <That's> right. <laughs> or Jameson. There you ah. go. <laughs> so getting, getting back to the band aspect, uh, like Paul said, uh, do you have a set group of guys now? Or are you uh, rotating people in and out? Yeah, I think right now we're, we're, we would love to have a set group of people, but, you know, we referenced it earlier that there's so many musicians. So we have this gentleman by the name of Phil Roach, and he's a fiddle player in Chicago. And people that know fiddle players, they have said to us, he's the best fiddler in Chicago. And it's like, well, it, he's not playing with us because Sean and I are awesome. He's just playing with us because it's a lot of fun. But he plays with uh, Dave Matthews' cover band, um, and that's where we actually took it from. Uh, we do an event called the Witch Fest, and we do that every year. And that's where they were playing with us on that that bill. Uh, but then the same thing, we have Garrett with uh, Ron Burgundy's playing bass. I mean, so we just – and then we also have uh, – who's with us uh, this Sunday show, or this Saturday show? Eitan, that- Eitan and Dave Gans. And Dave Gans. Dave Gans, which sure. was from – the flapjacks i mean he's a phenomenal player and the Aton, who's a wonderful prodigy on the on the keyboard i mean he's with us and then we actually have hannah playing fiddle with yeah, us. Hannah watson yeah we just had so many people that just we continue to cycle through so if we're able to 
keep people, we would, but it just, it doesn't seem to go that way because everybody that plays with us plays with several different acts. So they're, we just, they're, they're, they're a jobbing musician, right? So they, you got, it. right. Yeah. yeah. And what's great about that is, is so many of these acts that have these great musicians in them, like the Trip and Billies and these other, these other excellent bands, they're very structured, Right. So they know exactly what they're going to go play. They're going to play note for note, everything that's, you know, maybe not note for note, but close to it. They've got a, a particular thing that they need to be part of. And it's held together by some management system or or something. And they really appreciate when they come out with Sean and Charlie, because you never know what the hell is going to happen <laughs> at one of our shows. Right. right. And they're, I mean, we have we have Phil come out to play with us. And we might play Four Non Blondes, and we might play ACDC, we might play Frank Sinatra. You never know what we're going to play. And he is going to do a killer job no matter what it is. And he, I think he, they, they just love this freedom that comes from playing in a band that you never know what might happen. And the stakes are fairly low, right? We're not going to hold them. He's great. We're not going to hold anything against them. So I think, uh, I think there's a certain amount of freedom with playing in Sean and Charlie that comes with the fact that we're out there to please the crowd and whatever they might want on any given night is what we're going to try to give them. And they love that feeling. So it's, it's been great for us to be able to play with some of these great musicians that otherwise would be playing with some top acts throughout the area, but it's more structured on that side. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a little it's, looser, it's, a little freer. If I leave here tomorrow, never played with the set list ever that's it's just been fun. twice two or three times i mean we've played maybe three thousand shows there was oh, two or three times when we had a set list and all right my fault. it was interesting I meant, <laughs> but that's that's more like just piggybacking off what Sean said is yeah there's no set list so we just literally go and sean and i know which songs we can do and then the crowd may call a disco tune then nobody knows how to play. And we just go, all right, G, A, what key? And then we just figure it out. I'm, I'm fly. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, so you, you, you mentioned some of the songs you might do. And it's quite a variety of stuff. But what would you consider your genre of music? Or, or, or what are some of the songs that, that, that you guys do that you, that you enjoy doing or that have a great response? Uh, you yeah. you pick you pick two Charlie and then I'll pick two after you. Okay, I was gonna say Sean referenced this. I heard him talking to somebody at our last gig that people refer to us as an Irish band. Sean and I are not an Irish band. However, Sean's family is from Ireland, so I mean the amount of songs that Sean knows that you know for Irish type stuff. Okay. We could play Irish all night long. So it, we, we will play on Western Avenue and St. Patty's Day parades. And, you know, we will do all that kind of stuff. But we're not really typically an Irish band. But I would say we do a lot of Irish music. In that bog there was a tree, a rare tree, a rattling tree. Well, the tree and the bog and the bog down You know, Wild Rover, Whiskey in the Jar, Sean. I'll, those will be my two that I'll that I'll take. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Char. And it's funny because on any given night, we would play like if we played thirty-five songs on a show, we might play two Irish songs. But then people would call us up and be like, "Oh, hey, we got a St. Patrick's Day show. We want you to play. You're an Irish band." And we're like, "Well, I mean, we're not right." What's the uh, pay? What's a pay, baby? We are. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really funny that those couple of Irish songs that we played really stuck with people, and that's what they remembered us for. But I would say, like, for a long time when we were coming up, uh, when we were just starting off, we would play Kiss. 
by Prince and oh, Charlie. Wow. Well, Charlie would sing this song. And when it got to that, rah, that crazy high part, <laughs> he would just nail this and the whole place would fall down and go, no way. I can't believe he nailed that. <laughs> now, that's one. <laughs> uh, and aside from that, uh, and the Irish tunes that Charlie was talking about, I would go with, I think the one that we've had for longer than any other has been Piano Man. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. Yes. It's, I mean, it says everybody knows every word to it, and we don't have a piano in the band, <laughs> other than every once in a while when Aton <laughs> plays with us, but we would we would sing, we we play that song and bring the crowd into it as hard as we could, and everybody absolutely loves every second of it, and that's still, when we play weddings, that's the request. We want the last song of the night to be your version of Piano Man. It's, it's, it's crazy. He says, son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes. But it's sad and it's sweet and I knew it complete when I wore a younger man's clothes. Oh. Yep. What were the uh, three songs that you guys recorded at Star Treks, and uh, do you still play them? <laughs> <laughs> so there were several of our bands that recorded at Star Treks. The first band that uh, George recorded was called Blue Collar at the time, and that was Away, Plaid, and Uniform, which, Very good. oddly enough, those were the three names of the songs. And after recording them, realizing that there was a way plaid uniform, we decided, or I decided as a joke to tell my people that, that were listening to the songs, that it was a, a tribute to graduating from Catholic grammar school <laughs> for a girl that was like, a way plaid uniform. <laughs> um, it was very, that was very grunge like those three, those three songs. I still have them. It was recorded on 16, uh, 16 track, two inch. And we were, we got, we got tapes. We got cassette tapes of them. Yes, we did. We got yeah. Dak too. And Dak. Well, we got Dak Masters, right? But we never got Dak multi, we never got like ADAC, ADAT multi track or anything. So I, every once in a while, will have somebody send me a recording that they were given 30 years ago or 25 years ago or whatever it was of this. And it was, it's them having taken their single cassette tape that they were given and recorded it and, and transferred it to some digital format where they then email me an MP3 of an, of a cassette tape of those songs. They will forever be some of my favorite songs in the world. <laughs> um, but man, so they After were, all that money we spent. <laughs> so they were original songs, right? All yes. original, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then my band, after so after Blue Collar, or after Blue Collar kind of split ways, Charlie went off and recorded some music with another band and himself. He did Charlie Lyons by himself and did an album with that and did another album with a band called Grey Flower. I went off and did a, uh, an album with a band called BMC. And that we also did at Star Treks uh, with Jeff, uh, Jeff Lewis, uh, who I think you probably know. Yeah, hey, I know Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that album was that we were in that perfect age where we were traveling around to college town, to college town, to college town and playing a lot in the city. Um, but as an original band, I mean, you guys know. I mean, you guys are coming up in a great age. But by the time we were coming up as an original band, it's really hard to, A, find the places that want to hire you for, for performing for the night. And you're not going to make any money doing it. You might, you might get $100, $200 a night um, as a regular uh, original band playing at these places. So, um Jeff's recording of BMC probably sold the most albums of, of my world before we went to a cover band with Charlie. How about you, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, I, I was with, uh, I did my solo album with George and then Great Flower, the, when I was playing drums in that band, they actually, we recorded with George as well. So yeah, I mean, we've, we've gone to Star Trek's, what, four or five times to record. 
And uh, we were big fans of George. I never recorded with Jeff, but I know he was usually the Studio B or the other studio. But yeah, George was always, always helpful to help, you know, to kind of help us with, oh, that's not the right key. And uh, ah, yeah. the, <laughs> first time, the first experience I remember with that, exactly what you're talking about is during Away, which was one of the first songs that we ever recorded there. Yep. George, I was in the vocal booth singing and he's like, all right, now hit the harmony. And I hit yeah. the harmony and then he goes, uh, hit it again. Uh, hit it. He might've, he might've made me sing this like 15, 16 times. And the whole time I'm thinking he's going, no, that was wrong. Try it again. But the whole time he was just multi ping pong and multi-tracking yeah. ping pong and these together. So when yep. it came out, it sounded like a hundred people singing this yeah. part. I'll never forget it. He yeah, tricked me awesome. into it, but it was a brilliant move. Yeah, yeah George, George, George and Jeff are both pretty good uh, engineers, and uh, and Je- oh, yeah. Jeff even to this day has a great ear, and and, and he's a master at uh, Pro Tools, so. which is an art in itself. Yeah. So 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 now, um, what what about what about original music now? Are you guys doing original music? Have you written it? <laughs> written anything still writing no. but not performing yeah i i know for me you know sean and i have gone back and forth a few times where i'll send him chords and you know back in the day i would write the chords and then sean would be able to improv lyrics and sing stuff and i think right now for me at least i'm like i'm too old and i feel so old you know, I'm like to really talk about it. <laughs> so I'm more like, hey, let's do Johnny Cash or let's, you know, I'd rather spend my time learning, you know, let's let's do Hotel California or something like that. I, so you, I don't really write anymore. On my, on my side, I still write. I still write, but I don't perform them at all. Like I've, I've got songs and songs and songs that I've write, but they're not the kind of songs that Sean and Charlie would perform. They're uh, they're more heartfelt. It's more like poetry set to music with a cool melody to it. It's, it's, uh, as much as I absolutely love doing it, and it's a great outlet for me, like psychologically, uh, to have that, but it's definitely not stuff that people want to go out on a Saturday night at some local bar and listen to. Let's take a time out here for a second. Road to Rock Radio is proud to welcome Paul Martin of MR Rush and the Dancing Noodles and Ray the Roadie. The Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Join Paul and Ray as they bring you weekly interviews from bands that have rocked Chicago. It's the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Monday night at 6 on Road to Rock Radio. So what do we uh, have coming up uh, in the future? You got anything booked? We do. We've got about, we've got this weekend, actually, we're at a little place called JJ J, J Shortstops. I think it's called in uh, Worth. It's a little bar, uh, roadside kind of joint with a lot of fun people in it. JP, uh, JP Shortstops, right? Isn't yeah, JP? yeah, yeah. JP it's Shortstops. There you go. You got yeah, it. Yeah, 11th yeah. in Worth, yeah. Or Chicago Ridge, one of the two, Worth, Chicago Ridge. Uh, really cool place, you know. So let's try to think of some of the places that we have shared. Like, oh. I assume, when, right when BMC, when our first original band was starting off, one of the first shows that we got to play was for opening up for uh, Gorilla. It was a Jimmy Gorilla. It was a... Um, he was a guitar teacher for uh, players for a long time. Gorilla. Anyway, okay. we played at Stingray. <laughs> Do you remember Stingray? On a hundred and Cicero, right? Hundred and fifth and Cicero. Yeah, it was right in the days, right in the days of uh, of uh, the Thirsty Whale. Back way back in those days. Well, I don't remember you Stingray. Are... I'm not saying I'm not saying we didn't play there, but. But we could. You guys were, you guys were probably far uh, above that at that time. That was we were talking about. How, well, how long ago was that, Charlie? We were what, eighteen, nineteen? Yeah, it had to be twenty. That was like yeah. twenty-five years ago. And now, call me vain, call me hopeful, call me whatever. But I, I you know, as Sean and Charlie has been now for fifteen years of of playing throughout the the Southwest Side, particularly, but the South Side of Chicago, I always hope that 
you know, if we ever decide to hang it up, we'll be remembered along with bands like the Dancing Noodles and the Five Guys Named Mo and all these bands that were around for so many years, just doing such great things. Yeah. Uh, we, we still have a long way to go, but man, that's, uh, that's always in my head that those guys that will be that will be considered in the same chapter as some of those guys, some of those bands. Well, thank you, but thank you, but I think you guys have. Uh, you guys have really made a name for yourself, and uh, and that's why I when when I got a hold of, of uh, Charlie, sent I just sent something to your email. You yeah. Know, Dan and Charlie responded, and I said that's good. I said I'm glad he responded because I, I love talking with you guys. And uh, same, same. And I think uh, I think you guys really made made a name for yourself. Like I said, when we started out, you know, if uh, if anybody's been on the south side or or anywhere in the south south suburbs. And they party with Sean and Charlie, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, every every marquee you go by in the South Suburbs, you've seen Sean and Charlie up there. <laughs> Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'll still never know. But I'll yeah, exactly. It. <laughs> I don't know if it's good though. <laughs> I remember driving down the street down Cicero at one point years and years ago, and I drove past three places within I don't know four blocks. It all had Sean and Charlie on their marquee. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> That's I think right. maybe we're too narrow of a demographic, Char. You might yeah. want to spread it out a little bit. <laughs> well, I'll tell you too, which is funny because people always ask, how did you guys come up with the name? Obviously, there's obvious, you know, obvious. <laughs> but it's funny. We got because, real creative. No, but it's funny. The, the story is Sean and I played a, I want to say, was it, was it, I don't even remember, but it was when we first started playing and the guy that owned the bar said, well, what do, I got to put it in a paper on <laughs> or something. What he had to put it in there? And I'm like, he's like, what's your band name? And we're like, we don't have a band name. And he goes, all right, well, I'm just going to call you Sean and Charlie. And that's, and that's how the name came. I like, we were just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I remember saying, I think Charlie and Sean sounds better. And Charlie was like, no, man. <laughs> so have you guys played anywhere else besides the south, southwest suburbs? Have you ventured downtown, up north, out west? Oh, yeah. We had, we had, we had standing gigs at places like Fado in the city. And uh, we've done when? We've done so many. Uh, well, if you don't count private parties, we've done private parties across the tri-state area, uh, if you will. I know that's not that big of an area, but it's big when you're, when you don't have to go that far to, to play a show. Um, but in the city, they, they ate it up and it was great, but I found, we found that bang, bang for the buck, if you will, was better in the suburbs than it was in the city. The city yeah. was, all right, go down there, try to find a parking spot, load your gear in up three flights of stairs, play for the night. And the crowd was loving. And, and I love the crowd. And, the, and even the management of these places was great. But what they didn't realize was we could make the same or better money every night playing at places that didn't put us through the heartache of going through all the bullshit. So yeah, we go to, uh, daughter and just pull up right by the stage door and just load our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even when we were playing 250 nights a year, it was all, you know, it was all within, I don't know, it was all within 20 minutes, maybe a half hour drive. I think the furthest we really went was out to Shorewood. Uh, and that was, that was one of my favorite stories. <laughs> so I had a Wednesday night pool league that I played in for, for a long, long time. And my whole family, it was like a tradition. We played in my older brothers were still on the team and I was joining the team and we played for years. And one night, Charlie and I played, it was right at the very beginning, out in a place in Morris called 312, or 312, however you yeah. want to pronounce it. And we played uh, that night and we just, we played to the crowd. And there was a couple that came into the bar and they walked into the bar out on, I think it was in a wedding anniversary or something. And they something. owned the bar, but their whole goal was they wanted to go someplace that was, they could just hang out. And they walked in the bar and he'll tell this story. He says, I walked in the bar and I saw live music and I thought, oh crap. Like I hate live music. It does nothing but sound cheesy. And, 
take away from the night. And he hung out at his table and about halfway through the evening, he came up to us and he was like, I have a bar in Shorewood and I hate live music, but I want you guys to play there. Can you play there on a Wednesday night? And we said, well, we both have real jobs and, and, uh, you know, I've got a pool again Wednesday night, but I guess, okay. What? And he said like, all right, two weeks from now, whatever, Wednesday night. And we said, all right, cool. So we go there, we go there and we play. That's the first time we walk into this place. It's out in uh, Shorewood and you walk in and it's kind of like, country bob's bunker right it's like a, yeah. it's not something that we would expect it at that time to to do well at and we you know, walked in the door and i remember like oh shit head down i'm setting my gear and i'm thinking they're not going to dig this at all and halfway through the set everybody's totally into it by the end of the set my pool team that was in the south over here in oak forest ended and drove out there and my brother was on the pool team and he came up to me and he goes did you see the the banner that he hung up behind the bar. <laughs> and I was like, no, I didn't see it. And I look up there and it says, Sean and Charlie every Wednesday night. And I, <laughs> 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 well, I, he didn't clear that with us, but I guess everything's going okay. <laughs> you know? Go ahead, Sean. Oh, yeah, so we did play every Wednesday for years. We did for, for almost two years. We played every Wednesday night there. Yep. And then we had another gig that was every Thursday night. And that's how we ended up playing 250 shows a year. But people often wonder, you know, when we play now, people call us up and say, Hey, Sean and Charlie, we want you to play the show. Uh, how much does it cost? And you know, we'll tell them and they'll say, okay, cool. We'll have lots of Jameson there for you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I, this was never a plan. Like we never, wanted to be that band that drank a lot of Jameson. But what happened at this place, the place I'm telling you out in Shorewood every Wednesday night is Charlie and I would get there. We'd set up our gear. Our show starts in 10 minutes. We would go up to the bar and we'd have a quick shot. And we just chose random. Like, I don't know. What do you want to have? I don't know. Let's have Jameson. Okay. We'll have a shot of Jameson. And then for the night we would drink pints of kettle and Red Bull. <laughs> right you remember those days Char? oh yeah so we were like ah, it's a wonder we had so much energy at the end of the night <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> but, so but these, those pints of kettle and red bull they would last us like two hours right because you're playing songs you're going the whole time and we would play four hour shows with no breaks back then because yep. you could smoke in the bars so there's really no need for a break so we would just keep going anyway people would come up and request a song and one guy comes up and requests a song, and we play it for him. He goes up to the bar and says, I want to buy the band a drink. And then she says, well, they drink these Kettle and Red Bull, but that drink they already have there is going to last them two hours. And he says, oh, okay, well, do they do shots? Well, yeah. Well, they had a shot of Jameson before the show. Get him a shot of Jameson. So then we played his request. He brings us a shot of Jameson. We do shot of Jameson. No big deal. Ten minutes later, Guy walks up and requests a song. <laughs> we play a song. Five minutes later, shot of Jameson comes up. Before you know it, so many shots of Jameson are coming up that people are like, wow, these guys drink a lot of Jameson. And for the first two years of our thing, yep. people would come up and say, Sean, Charlie, I heard, I seen you guys. And they would never say, oh, you're really good. Or you're really entertaining or any of that. They would just be no. like, you guys drink a lot of Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> and it became this un unrequested aspect of the band that really served us well over the years. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but people would also say, that's iced tea in there, right? There's no way you're drinking that much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you could have yeah. been like Dean Martin. He used to have apple juice in his uh, glasses. Well, good point. You're right. And I and yeah. the portrayal that he had was that he was drunk, and it was like, nope, he never drank. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was sober as a judge. He's the only guy that could get away with it. That's right. That's right. And for all my nieces and nephews coming up that saw shows, that's exactly what I told them I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no, that's not really whiskey. Don't ever try to do that. This is all fake. <laughs> <That's> all oh. <laughs> So is that one of your favorite places to play at, or do you have some favorites that you really enjoy playing at? Yeah, yeah you know what, Charlie? You, you take this one. I'll join in afterwards. 
No, no, I'm fine. I'm just saying, but Riley's is one of my favorite. And I'll tell you the reason why Riley's is, is one of my favorites. When Sean and I were probably 16, 17, 18, we used to have fake IDs and we would go into this place. And I, we would see bands like Mr. Blotto, which I love Blotto. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? So we would go see these these type of bands, Hello Dave, and just like all these cool bands like when we were younger. So now Sean and I have, have become something where we, we loaded all these underage kids, you know, and, and would pack the bar. Obviously, it's people's parents that, that know Sean and Charlie, but now their kids are like coming over from college or whatever. But it's just cool to me. Like it's a nostalgic thing to be like, man, we used to come, um, like we have Dave Gans who's going to be playing with us this this Saturday, but he used to play with the Flapjacks with Mike Brown on drums. You know, I mean, you know, Blotto, like all these different people. We used to go to rock time, so now it's cool to play there for me. I don't know, Sean, for you if you have a place, but that's that's mine, my, my favorite. Uh, I, you know, I have so many places throughout the years that have been favorites. There's so many shows, but you hit on a point there that was <laughs> that was uh, something that's one of my favorite points to talk about when people ask us about that today because everybody always say, oh what's your favorite place to play what's your favorite song to play you know this and that my one of my moments that i now enjoy that i never enjoyed back in the day was when we're playing at a place called lake riley's where you know it's black wednesday and there's a thousand people there and they're just tripping over their own shoes and these girls will come up to us, or these kids will come up to us, and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, Sean, Charlie, it's so nice to see you. My parents love you. <laughs> <laughs> and all I can think is I probably played shows before you were even born to your parents exactly. hanging out at these bars. And to piggy bank off that, Sean, I, I'll never forget, I had this young girl at Riley's come up to me maybe five years ago. And she said, do you guys play any Rod Stewart? And we really don't, but I'm like, we can do Maggie May or whatever. So I said, sure. Yeah, we'll do some, we'll do some Rod Stewart. She goes, I have no idea who that is. My mom wanted to hear it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you don't know who Rod Stewart is? I'm like, oh God. I'm like, wait, 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 that's uh, yeah. That's coming. Oh, through. You know that's, that's coming. At. That's where I'm at. Have you guys had that? Have you guys had that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God, that's awesome. God, that's such a goal. Yeah. <laughs> my grandma used to come see you guys. Uh, exactly. That's great. Thanks. You know that's coming soon, man. It's coming. Soon. My grandma oh, said she used to date one of the guys in the band. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hear about this now. <laughs> So, so going back to the Irish music, you guys do some Irish music. You've got a song on your on your website. Oh yeah, that you that uh, yeah we do, we do lots of Irish. Yeah, Galway girl. Yeah. Odd about that song, Galway Girls. It's very po- it was very popular in the states, a little bit, a little popular, and then we we were playing it when it was just a little popular in the states. Of course, we were doing it before it was cool, and uh, <laughs> then it became very popular in Ireland. And a guy named Mundy, who's a uh, an Irish performer, did a version of it. That song was written by Steve Earle. Yeah, that was, yeah. So that's the version we always played of it. So, uh, so if anybody uh, wanted to uh, find out what Charlie, Sean, and Charlie are playing, uh, how do they find you uh, social media wise? Sean and Charlie dot com. Okay, all one word. Yeah, all one word. and Charlie dot com. Yep, and I think that's uh, pretty much for the Facebook Sean and Charlie one word as well. So, yep. Yeah, those would be the two, the two best places to find out where we're at. And we love to hang out and meet new people. So we'd love to see who who's coming out and what they want to hear. Well, hopefully you get to play <laughs> some more soon and uh, and uh, and doing some more shows now. But uh, you never know what's going on with this, with this crazy world. 
Yeah. You were talking about playing Wednesday through Sunday. I says those those were the good old days, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if that's happening too much anymore. So at least not for a while. So which yeah. is a shame. We'll think we can get it. We'll think we can get this point. We'll throw the occasional recording up on Facebook or something. But coming into uh, September and October, I think we're going to be playing at least once a once a month or once a week. So that gets us back to going. Uh, a lot of that is private events, weddings, and things like that. We've been doing a lot of that over the years, and uh, and then a few bars here and there. And once things start opening up, man, we'll be we'll be jumping right back on it. That's right. All righty, guys. Thanks for uh, getting together with us tonight. This Love has it. been uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, it was it's been a, a great time. Great time. Thank, yeah, and thank you for the invite for asking us to do it. I mean, super appreciative. Thank you. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate it. Have a great good talking, talking to you guys. Have a good one. Yeah. We'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you so Sounds much. Sounds good, guys. Peace. We're going to tell you to keep your cards and letters coming in, folks. <laughs> I think uh, I had too many shots uh, of oh. Jameson. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I dozed off. I I think I had a few too many. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure and Bigora. Sure and Bigora, I know you know. <laughs> well, that, that was fun. fun. It that was, was a ball, fun. man. Them guys are crazy. Yes, they are. And and I failed to mention that, that um that Sean was actually driving while inter- while we were interviewing him. Yeah, the first half of the interview he was driving home from work. Yeah, so that that was kind of fun. But, some uh, great stories, some uh some fun times some guys have had and uh you know it, it, they're still they're just rip roaring they can't rip, you know, can't wait to get out again and do it keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, uh they're playing uh we got some shows coming up, a couple of shows, uh, uh, just about a show a week coming up. So hopefully they get to all those shows in and um, and get to play them. And I'll tell you, if you haven't been out to see Sean and Charlie, uh, you're missing a lot of fun. Now, it's not just Sean and Charlie. They have a whole band, but they call them Sean and, so, so Sean and Charlie. And they are a lot of fun and, uh, and very entertaining. So be sure and get out and see them sometime soon. Most, uh, especially if you like table dancing and bar dancing, they will perform for you. And who doesn't? I, exactly. So, exactly. So. I mean, a, a place I used to go to, the, the owner used to tell the people, uh, if it's round, stay on the ground. If it's square, get your ass in the air. And people <laughs> jump out of the tables and they'd be dancing away on the square tables, man. <laughs> nice. That's nice. Yeah. Well, it's good I, to be back and uh, talking to people. Yeah. And uh, good to be talking to you. Yeah, we uh, hopefully we'll get some. Uh, 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 we've got some other things lined up here coming up real soon. So uh, sorry we we missed a couple of weeks there. But yeah, and then we had a derecho come through. Uh, I had no power for four days. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. See you next week, hopefully. No more derechos. <laughs> no, no. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music that's played on this podcast. The music is used to promote the band or musicians that are interviewed. Rock and Roll Chicago. Rock and Roll Chicago. My hometown. Well, I was born in the city. Go to Rock and City. Chicago Rock and Roll is out of the